If I were to tell you that I'm way out of my comfort zone with this video and the rescue attempt of two Phalaenopsis orchids, that would not be an understatement, but I am going to follow the advice and instructions to the best of my ability. Memory, please engage. <laughs> According to Trisha's Orchid Life, we had a fantastic live stream, which I will link in the description. Yes, it is rather long, but it is chock a block full full of valuable information that I shall be revisiting quite a lot. So let's do this. I'm going to start with the less messy one. This is my insolence, terminal spike, etc. Now, the instructions were as follows to the best of my recollection. It's to pot her up, as you can see, I've had her in the swag and bag system set up here for rescue so that there's not that much hydration being lost through the leaves because I have an extremely dry climate. However, you see there is a little nub in here. Where's that little nub been? There. For the past, let's say three weeks, maybe more that she's been with the swag and bag, that nubbin has not really had a chance to move. She's lost two spikes, let's say she's absorbed them, and the terminal spike is still going strong, but she's got nothing else. And that's why I'm saying this one is less messy, because the other one we are going to be unpotting. So the idea being, pot her up with a little bit of layer of sphagnum moss right before we then fill around with a little bit more bark. The sphagnum moss being the humidity barrier, so that it doesn't rot the base, but still provides humidity. And then if I have some extremely dry days, I'm going to put plastic around the base. So this is a slipper orchid mix that I've had for <laughs> many, many years, but it's the only bark that I have. So we'll be using that. And seeing as my orchid doesn't have any roots, we're going to also stake her <laughs> and stay focused. Just be very, very focused. I'm gonna take anything away that could pose any threat of rot. So I'm just taking off the velamen, leaving the steely, keeping my hands away from that little nub in there. And then Trish also said it is possible that with the humidity from the sphagnum moss, maybe the roots that are trying and sort of died <laughs> or stopped growing that they may start to push out as well. That would be awesome. But you can tell that I'm, I'm really, really focusing because I don't want to rush ahead, seeing as I've never successfully rescued any Phalaenopsis that ended up in this stage. We'll take away that sphagnum moss right there as well. And then we'll put a layer of moss on the surface of that bark. Good thing that I still have some of these materials because I just am into inorganic media. And we'll just wet that down a little bit, like so. <laughs> oh, I'm really trying to remember everything that Trish told us. Okay, that's too high. I know, Trish, I think that you mentioned that I should be cutting the stem. I'm very loath to do that because I need some kind of stability and the stem is not going to rot in this circumstance because it doesn't rot when it's in lecker. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm just gonna at least go with that. Maybe just get a little bit more moss down here. Let's look at the back tuck all that moss in over there. Get all of it nice and close. And I'm patting it in a little bit just so that it doesn't go anywhere where I don't want it. My swag and bag method was the last resort because as I mentioned, I have never been able to successfully bring a Phalaenopsis orchid back once she's gotten to this stage in all of my years of growing these orchids. It's never been a good thing for me. I feel I should just add a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, there we go. That's one down. I'm just gonna put some more moss that was in the bag anyway on the top. I'm telling you, my humidity is non-existent. That's why I'm so apprehensive about <laughs> having her in a pot. But we're going to do this. We're going to do this and see what happens. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Seeing as it's already wet, I'm not going to throw it out. And if you're new to my channel and you wonder why I keep saying my humidity is non-existent, I don't have a humidifier. I don't use humidifiers or anything like that. I am in Southern Spain and it is a very, very warm time of year where the air is hot and dry. Something I absolutely enjoy, but rescue orchids do not. So what I'm going to do on top of that is put her in the bag again, like so. <laughs> Espera, <laughs> let's turn her around. And then she'll go back inside. Trisha's Orchid Life said lower light levels so that we don't tax her too much. That would be Proyecto Numero Uno done. And now we're going to go on to Ninja Raff. Ninja Raff is a whole different kettle of fish. I have been instructed to unpot this orchid and I am usually an advocate for not unpotting orchids if they're stressed because that adds another level of stress. But I am only following instructions here now. I'm not gonna go with what I would normally do, but we did see mold in the crown during the live stream. So this orchid now has also been decapitated because the whole top was just all gooey. So there's gonna be a little bit more hydrogen peroxide in there. And we're gonna let that fizz while we deal with the unpotting. And it is fizzing a lot. It is really fizzing. Wow. In prior treatments, I have given her a lot of dragon's blood, as you can see. And that is what's made the whole pot look a little bit red. And the instructions here are to unpot her, remove the sponge that is in the middle. And I hope that we have something to work with afterwards because roots, as you can see, are there and they're pretty good. So remove the sponge and we're gonna take the velamen off and we're gonna leave the steely. We're gonna leave that behind. We're not cutting the steely off. I'm just checking for more mold if I see it. Now that I have her out of the pot. Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm so nervous about this. You see how close up that little sponge plug is there? That is possibly one of the reasons that the orchid wasn't happy with that vicinity to her stem like that and so up close. There's a piece of bark wedged in there. Let's create some aeration. That's the whole point of this exercise for this specific orchid. All right, because there's rot, we've got stem rot. We want aeration around that stem, but we wanna maintain the roots, which, well, they're coming into a little bit of a drier setup because I have been instructed to use the bark that was in the pot so continue using this because it's what the roots that are alive are accustomed to. So the point is not to remove the bark. Just check the dead roots and remove the velamen. I'm leaving that velamen on because it's attached to a good root system. Down here, you can see how good the root system is, so that velamen can stay. But where it is soft and gives way easily, that's where I'll remove it. And I want to keep this media as clean as possible from the velamen that I'm removing, because of course I'm instructed to use it again. It's still fizzing. Wow, at least it's doing something. At least it's activating. Maybe it's actually dealing with the rot as well again. Maybe I need to put more hydrogen peroxide in more often. There's another one right here. It's a branch. So the idea here being create air around the stem. 
And if I'm repeating myself, and you know all of this already, it is me talking to myself out loud just to stay on track. Again, I'm way out of my comfort zone here. So the instructions are to use that bark, put her into a mask like I have here, which I'm gonna wash out, I'll be right back. While I was cleaning the mask, I thought, no, 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 <laughs> that's not what I was told to do. I need a clear pot. So here's a bigger size clear pot with the holes burnt in the sides. I need to put the roots on the outer edges so I can monitor them. That is what I was told to do. That's what Trisha's Orchid Life does. And then fill up with the older media. Now this is a bigger pot, of course, so I will be adding my bark into it, some fresh bark, but I'm going to get all the older media down around the roots that are accustomed to it and only top up with the fresh bark. And just to make sure that I have roots on the sides of the pot that I can monitor. Those were the instructions. Oh, I was just going to put her back into the white mask. Let me get the root right here to the outer edge. And I want the old bark to be more in the middle. Also to touch the roots that were in the sponge that are used to a very wet environment. I've got roots on the outer edges. Okay, so far so good. Wow, if you're here, <laughs> still, thank you so much. <gasps> oh, my heart is pounding. It is going 100 miles an hour. Let my orchids know that you want them to live. Give this video a like, please. I'm going to add a bit of sphagnum moss right in the center where the roots were accustomed to the sponge, but lower, low enough from the base. I don't want it around the base. This orchid is not being changed to a wet dry cycle. That's not the point of the exercise. The existing roots will have the same kind of humidity and moisture around them that they're used to. If I let them dry out a little bit on the outer edges, that's okay in my opinion, but I don't want the whole pot to go bone dry for any length of time. I'm trying to recreate the media mix, the media moisture ratio as before. So we're gonna stay true and just follow instructions. And those are now snug up against a media that will retain water. And I'm going to top up with bark. This slipper bark mix that I have has some sponge in it, which is okay because it will also replicate, let's say, the degraded media that was in the pot all the way up. Now that I've got a bigger pot, I don't have that. So I'm just going to leave the sponge in this case. The other one, I took the sponge out when I was topping with bark, but here we've got a different scenario. I'm sticking with the principle of keeping the media loosely packed. That I am doing. I'm not going to put them back in the same kind of a tight configuration. So, but I want to make sure that the stem is clear of anything so that I can get some airflow in there. Well, I'll wait for feedback from the experts. <laughs> Maybe somebody else is going to see this and provide other suggestions. Oh, this leaf is going to come off soon anyway. Oh, you see the staining of the dragon's blood? Now the hydrogen peroxide turns into water, so I'm not too concerned about that, but it's the fact that I've got rot in the stem and I don't want it to stay wet too long. Oh, you guys, my heart. Okay, I can see the roots here. Added a little bit of sphagnum moss here. There was a big air gap. So I can see roots all around the perimeter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear. Let me get the other one. I think I followed the instructions to a T. The stem is raised up and clear. This, what you see here, is staining from the dragon's blood. So that's still a viable root. Oh, deep breath. <laughs> 
Bit of a discombobulated video, oof, but here they are. Fingers crossed, my nerves have not subsided. I hope I followed the instructions as suggested by Trisha's Orchid Life. Now we wait. I so appreciate you if you've watched to the end. Thank you so very, very much. Self-esteem is low. Would you please give this video a like? Cross your fingers as well that something happens that we can report back some positive results. Either way, I appreciate all the time Trisha's Orchid Life took during the live stream, which is linked below, sharing her recommendations. I hope I'm a good student. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though. Please let you stay safe. Take care. Bye.